Hello friends, today is the second day of April 2020 and you can see that it's still snowing in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I mean, it's so tiring, like it's really, 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 really tiring that we are still experiencing snow in Winnipeg, Manitoba. You can see, you can see the road, see how everywhere is white, see how the snow is falling and this is what we get to experience in Canada where other places people are already wearing their spring jackets coming out to play um, during the spring weather but we are still experiencing snow so it's looking like we are still in winter so yeah um, I'll be talking about the frequently asked questions in my video but I have to sit down and talk about it I can't stay outside to talk about frequently asked questions on immigrating to Canada so I'll be going inside to talk about it now all right see you inside subscribers and new subscribers if you don't know me I talk about immigrating to Canada and life in Canada and anything that I know that is happening in Canada I think the world has shut down like we all know what is going on in the world and um, I'm supposed to be doing lots and lots of videos but I am kind of tied up with so many things that have been hanging I've been pushing by the side for a long period of time and I'm just using this opportunity to like clear all those things so that uh, by the time this situation ends i will go back to my normal routine and like i know almost every part of africa and europe and asia everybody is kind of self-isolating and social distancing and washing their hands i want to say thank you to all the frontline workers the medical professionals the people who work in the grocery stores the drivers everybody who is hands-on like working this period to make sure that things are still a little bit normal although almost everything is no longer normal like the world has changed in some weeks um i'm supposed to even be going out to do more outdoor videos but of course we have to self-isolate so we have to obey the rules of self-isolating instead of going outside we don't know what's happening out there um, it's only when you need something essential that you have to go outside so today's video is more like the frequent question i usually receive on this channel the first question is will immigration levels still continue in canada um, based on what is happening i'm going to respond to this question based on my own observations and whatever i have seen that is happening the canadian society is totally on lockdown this period to fight what is going on i'm not going to mention the name and that means only people who are working in essential services are actually really working and people who can work from home to to still ensure that the economy is moving those are the people that are working and a lot of people have been laid off their jobs air canada westjet they are the two major airlines in canada they've laid off like almost um 12 to 13 thousand workers um people who are producing vehicles like chrysler they've also laid off workers the hospitality industry has laid off workers because of course when you don't have people traveling you don't when there is no meeting when everybody's social distancing um, you won't find anybody renting hotels or booking Airbnbs or whatever. Um, a lot of people have laid off workers and as at the last time or the last research I did on the number of people who are going to apply for employment insurance, um, it's already hitting 1 million or above 1 million people and this involves also small business owners um, who are not providing essential services they are more or less like not doing anything they are the hardest hit people because if they do not contribute to the employment insurance they, they won't be getting anything from EI and for those of you who don't know what employment insurance is employment insurance is a benefit that people receive from the government um, that's not anybody you must have worked for like 600 hours before you can be eligible to receive this employment insurance so 
um, if you lose your job you can get the employment insurance but if you resign from work you can't get the employment insurance the same thing applies to people who go on maternity leave and paternity leave and um, sick leave uh, maybe the person is sick for a long period of time and the person has been working the person can get employment insurance due to medical um, situation whatever so that's what employment insurance is and most times it's only people who are employed working for an employer that usually get this employment insurance but self-employed people who cater for themselves sometimes they also contribute to employment insurance just in case they have an issue with their business and they can no longer take care of their business and maybe something happens like what is happening right now and they shut down they can get some money from the government uh, for a period of nine months nine months the maximum period that you can get employment insurance from the government within that nine months you should be actively looking for a job and reporting to the government on your job search strategies and what you have done and the interviews you have done so that's employment insurance for anybody who does not know so presently over 1 million people have applied for employment insurance and the numbers will still go up because some companies are able to like sustain some persons working from home this period but they might scale back and reduce the number of people who will be working from home as from next month for april we are still watching how the situation is curbed but for may we are not so sure and um that's what it is and based on these numbers it's going to affect immigration because they will not want to be bringing people into Canada when there are no jobs. It is when there are jobs that people can come into Canada. But because there are no jobs, it will be difficult to start saying people should leave their countries to come into Canada to work when there are no jobs. And there are Canadians in Canada that can do the jobs that are available. So it's going to affect immigration. That's my own opinion anyway, because everything is currently on hold now. We don't know what is happening and based on that we don't know yet if they will make the announcement that they will scale back on the number of people that they will allow into canada or if the immigration levels will continue in the same pace that they started we don't know yet but from what i think and based on the numbers i know that i am thinking that um immigration levels will be reduced to accommodate uh, what has happened to the Canadian society based on what is currently happening all over the world So that is the situation right now uh, Does it mean you should continue? With your plans or with your applications or whatever. Yes, you can continue with your plans um, We don't know yet. Like I said, it's my own observation until the announcement is made before you can say yes uh, the announcement has been made, but as long as there is no announcement You can continue with your plans of applying to immigrate to Canada through any of the pathways that are available Now this leads to the second most frequently asked question I receive and that is Can an applicant apply on multiple pathways? The answer is yes so if you are an applicant and you already created your express entry profile and you see that your comprehensive ranking scores are low and there are really little or no opportunities of you getting an invitation to apply you can go ahead and apply to any of the other pathways like the AIPP the RNIP these two pathways does not really affect your express entry profile because they do not have anything to do with express entry you can also go ahead and search for provincial nominations as well if you see that your occupation is in demand in any of the provinces you can go ahead and apply to any of the provinces but of course you know that each province has its own requirements so if you have a cousin in manitoba and you have another cousin in saskatchewan you can apply to two of them which one that comes first anyone that comes first if saskatchewan comes first you take saskatchewan and then cancel manitoba if manitoba comes first you take manitoba and then cancel saskatchewan it does not stop you from applying for AIPP, it does not stop you from applying for RNIP. As long as you meet the requirements and you are eligible, go ahead and apply for as much as you can. If you want to apply for a job in any of the territories like Northwest Territories, Yukon and Nunavut, you can go ahead and apply for those ones. Those ones are employer driven as well and just 
spread your how would I call it now spread your tentacles as wide as you can on any of the immigration pathway and hopefully one of them will click for you so that is number two question the third most frequently asked question I usually receive is who should be the principal applicant now when it comes to immigration um, anybody can be the principal applicant but it's advisable the person whose factors meet most of the eligibility requirements should be the one to apply for instance a husband and a wife want to immigrate to canada it is best to look for who is younger and who has the most qualifications and who can score the highest ban in ialts so it varies although both parties can combine to boost their scores but the person who has the highest qualification the uh, who is younger because of the age factor and who has the highest band of IELTS scores should be the principal applicant. I received a very funny email where somebody was saying that um, one guy was discouraging her husband because it's not good for the, the wife to be the principal applicant. And I was just laughing at the email because uh, when it comes to immigrating to Canada, it is not who is the head or because I'm a man, I should be the principal applicant. It has nothing to do with it. It is who has the highest qualification, who has the lowest age, and who has the highest IELTS scores that should be the principal applicant. Um, so it is not a gender war. It is not a war of I am the man or I am the woman or whatever. It is not a gender war. Both parties, both partners have to come together and um, choose who will be the best person to apply. So in most cases, both husband and wife can apply, especially if two of them have different occupations, just to spread their tentacles, like I mentioned before. So to get to have more advantage and to have more chances, both husband and wife or both partners should have their credentials evaluated and write IELTS and then spread their applications to any of the pathways that they know is possible or feasible for immigrating. So whoever gets maybe a job in any of the RNIP or AIPP provinces, then the person can become the principal applicant. Or whoever is picked up from the express entry pool and given a provincial nomination, then the person can become the principal applicant. It is who has the best advantage of ensuring that the family immigrates to Canada that should be the principal applicant. So I hope I have answered some of your questions today i will continue with the question and answer series and i hope that the snow ends as soon as possible i don't understand why it is snowing in april but this is the situation we'll find ourselves and um, i'm looking to just go around so that i do a video around the city and uh, so that you can see how we are self-isolating during this period in winnipeg manitoba thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video Bye bye